Okay, hi there. Jeff here with the fourth in a series of short videos looking at trade theory. And this one will just take a few minutes to think about how you can use aggregate demand and supply curves at a macro level to think about uh, trade and the potential gains from trade. And indeed, you can use a DAS analysis to help explain some of the macroeconomic effects of changes in trade. So good examples will include the export multiplier, which we'll talk about in a second, the impact of cheaper imports, and also the possible impact on long-run aggregate supply uh, of the ability to import capital inputs, inputs, things like new technologies, hardware and software at a lower price because of trade. And also when inward FDI comes into a country to create extra productive capacity. So in terms of the gains from trade, in terms of aggregate demand and supply, well, let's think about a short and aggregate supply curve and an aggregate demand curve and that gives us this equilibrium. Of course, one of the gains from trade can be the, the boost it, it gives to uh, GDP growth from successful exporting of goods and services. So rising exports could be shown, for example, in a nice simple way by an outward shift in the aggregate demand curve, uh, which lifts GDP and, of course, causes a rise in, potentially a rise in the price level. And much depends, of course, here on the amount of spare capacity in the economy. But there's a nice simple diagram showing the impact of a rise in exports. You could also bring in the idea of the export multiplier effect or the trade multiplier. So this is one of the ideas we're trying to persuade our students to do, is to encourage them to shift the curve again. So you get the rise in exports, that's the, the, if you like, the tangible effect of the, of the exporting of the goods and the services themselves. You can also get a, a multiplier effect kicking in, which drives demand higher and increases national income to Y3. A couple of good examples there will be the trade finance effect and the export logistics effect. So exports require financing. So you need trade insurance, you need uh, uh, trade credit, for example. So a lot of financial services are linked to trade. And if exports are rising, those sectors will also see an increase in their demand for goods and for the services they're providing. And export logistics, so the, the, the container ships, the, the lorries, the ports, the people working in, in uh, moving goods and services around the world economy. Uh, when trade is rising, uh, countries may benefit also from an increase in demand for export logistics illustrated there. So there can sometimes be a, a multiplier effect. A company successfully increases their exports, that increases demand within the circular flow of income, and that can then have a positive multiplier effect. It's also possible, of course, to think about the cost of imports. So just thinking, again, using an ADAS framework here, uh, if imports become cheaper, for example, because of a trade liberalisation agreement, then the aggregate supply curve will shift out to the right. Think of the aggregate supply curve, if you like, as, as the cost curve for the economy. So if aggregate, demand, aggregate supply shifts out to the right, that uh, can bring down inflation and also cause an increase in expansion of aggregate demand. Of course, if imports become cheaper, you may buy a lot more of them, might, might buy a lot more of them which could have an effect on AD because it's X minus M. I'm just focusing here on the impact of cheaper imports. And again, just think about the consequences of this. If a country introduces a trade liberalisation agreement, it might well be the case that some of the things they import are necessities and therefore they become, they become cheaper and that can have quite a big effect on the firm's costs. There's also a sort of long-run concept. I'll use a Keynesian aggregate supply curve here, uh, that if trade leads to an increase in aggregate demand, fine, let's shift out the aggregate demand curve, which again causes national income to rise. Uh, but of course, you can also get investment linked to trade. So it might well be the case, for example, that uh, export businesses grow and start to prosper, that generates the accelerator effect where they're increasing their investment spending in new capital. It might be that uh, investment comes into an economy, inward FDI comes into an economy, which increases productive capacity. So oftentimes as exports grow on the demand side, that generates increased investment on the supply side, and that might allow the economy to move to an even higher level of national income. So there we go, just a few thoughts of how you can use aggregate demand and supply curves if you're talking about the macro effects of trade.